Friday is over and the fastest driver in practice was Max Verstappen in a surprise to no one really but whilst Verstappen was the fastest once again today and that may seem boring to some there was actually a lot going on and that was actually very interesting and today I'll be talking about just that as we dive into the data from a hectic day of practice in Monte Carlo filled with incidents. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I just want to say before we start that I will be streaming a watch along of qualifying on Saturday as well as producing a qualifying data analysis video so be on the lookout for those tomorrow or of course later today if you're watching this on Saturday. Also I am currently in the process of buying a house which it turns out is very expensive and time consuming. So if you would like to help out just a little bit I've attached a link below if you would like to donate to help me out a little bit, but of course you don't have to do that. Now, let's get on to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the likes of Mercedes, Aston Martin, Ferrari and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. As usual, the streets of Monte Carlo bit back at any driver who made a slight error, as we saw with the likes of Nico Hülkenberg and Alex Albon both finding the wall in a bit of a way. Hulkenberg gave himself a puncture and Albon slammed into the barrier at the end of FP1. And speaking of Albon, it seems like Williams is sadly, as I kind of expected, struggling a little bit this weekend. Monaco is not a circuit that plays into their strengths. For Williams, their strengths are circuits with long straights and sadly Monaco doesn't really have any straights. And that means that they will be massively on the back foot and the times backed that up as Sargent was P20 and Albon was P19 at the end of FP2. But when you compare the lap times of Albon and let's say Piastri in the McLaren, who also had a bit of a disappointing session, you can see something interesting. Despite there not being any real sections with straights, the Williams is still able to use their straight line speed advantage over say the McLaren team. But at every braking zone and corner exit, the Williams is slower than their McLaren rivals. This tells me that even though Williams may have some advantage in a straight line, their lack of downforce really does mean that they could be propping up the back row of the grid this weekend, and I sadly do think Williams is the slowest car this weekend. As I mentioned, Piastri had a very disappointing FP2 session, finishing down in P18, which is not where I expected to see a McLaren this weekend. His teammate Norris, however, finished FP2 in 5th place and was only 0.4 seconds off of Verstappen. But where was Norris faster? Well, let's compare the two. As you can see, there is a visual difference between the two when it comes to who is on throttle for longer and who is on the brakes for a less amount of time. Norris is on the brakes visually less and also managed to get on the throttle sooner than his teammates and this is where all the lap time is made up for Lando. This tells me Piastri is lacking a lot of confidence so far in his McLaren and he just needs to find a little bit more because the time is there in the car. But, unfortunately for Piastri, if he does make a mistake, the Monaco streets can be very unforgiving. And I think this might be why Piastri is just holding back just a little bit. And whilst Piastri might have been disappointing, one driver who surprised me today was the Alfa Romeo of Valtteri Bottas. Bottas was very strong in both FP1 and especially so in FP2 when he was able to put his ailing Alfa Romeo car up in P8 and was ahead of both Alpine cars and when you compare the fastest lap of Bottas to Gasly you can see that there is very little to tell between the two drivers but who is faster where. Bottas it seems was able to get to full throttle sooner than the Alpine and had tremendous traction which gave him the ability to bolt down the straights. This is something that I have spoken about in the past but with McLaren. However due to Alfa Romeo being a little bit more potent in a straight line they are able to maintain that advantage all the way down those somewhat short straights. And it seems like if Alpha can nail qualifying, then they could be within a shout of a very strong weekend and may score some much needed points. Although it does seem like when we look at multiple drivers in the long runs, Alpha is a little bit weak on the longer run. However, thankfully for them, Monaco is virtually impossible to overtake on if the race is dry. And that means we may very well see Bottas or Joe 
outperform where their car typically can finish. In race trim, it seems like Alpine may be the strongest car as they have more pace than McLaren and Alfa Romeo around them. But if they don't nail their one lap performance, then it could be a very long race staring at the back of those cars. But now let's go to the top four teams and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, day one in Monaco was a very good day until the end of FP2. Carlos Sainz managed to top FP1, and in FP2, Charles Leclerc was P2, and Carlos Sainz was P3. And both drivers were within one tenth of a second from the fastest driver, which was obviously Max Verstappen. For Ferrari, this means that they have a good baseline to build from. Another thing which was not really a surprise was that Charles Leclerc was able to set his fastest time laps on his seventh overall lap on a set of soft tyres. Which means two things. Firstly, tyre wear, as expected around Monte Carlo, is virtually non-existent. And secondly, Ferrari might actually be able to race without having heavier tyre wear hamper them like it has in previous races. This could be down to the new floor and suspension that they are running, but we will have to wait and see. When you compare the fastest lap of both Verstappen and Leclerc, you can see that the two drivers are very evenly matched all around the circuit, and this weekend, due to the lack of DRS, Verstappen cannot use the DRS advantage that the Red Bull has, and that has pulled them back towards their rivals. If Ferrari can keep it clean and not make any strategical blunders, then they are within a good chance, I think, of potentially scoring a podium this weekend. For Mercedes, there was a lot of attention drawn to them and their brand new side pods as they have finally gotten rid of the zero pod concept as the promised benefits that it would deliver sadly never came to fruition. However, for me, I was looking forward more to their new floor and suspension in order to see if they could finally ride the bumps and curbs, which is something that has plagued their car since 2022. And it seems like so far, the car can actually run the curves a lot better than in previous years. And so far, it seems like Lewis Hamilton has enjoyed the changes a lot more than his teammate George Russell. So let's compare the two drivers and see where perhaps Lewis has been faster than George. As you can see when looking at all of their lap times, it seems like in general, Lewis has just been faster than his teammate. But when you look at their fastest laps, it becomes a little bit more clear as to why. Lewis is a little bit later on the brakes going into the Nouvelle Chicane and in general is able to carry a little bit more speed on the run into the Lowe's hairpin. It seems like from the onboards, Lewis has found a lot of confidence and is a lot more happy when out on track, especially with the new design. The question is though, can Mercedes build on this going forward? This weekend is not the best place for them to be testing what is a very new car, but they have managed to make the best of a situation, which is not really ideal. They have the potential to disrupt the likes of Ferrari, Aston Martin and Red Bull, but personally, I don't believe they will be in the hunt against these teams this weekend. But it will be a very positive weekend for them, as they will be learning what is a new concept. For Aston Martin, I must say I was a little bit disappointed, as I maybe expected a little bit more from them, which is a credit to what has been an incredible job that they have done so far this year. But even so, once again, Fernando Alonso was on incredible form and looks to be pumping in incredible laps and working magic in the Aston Martin. He was only a couple of tenths off of the Red Bull of Max Verstappen, but he did manage to finish ahead of the other Red Bull of Sergio Perez. And when we compare the lap times of both Fernando Alonso to Max Verstappen, we can once again see that Aston Martin was was not much slower in a straight line, which once again points to something that we saw in Miami, which is whatever the straight line speed deficit was that Aston Martin had, is no longer as prevalent, meaning that they could be in the fight. Alonso in this lap is stronger on the brakes and on corner exits, but even though he is close to Verstappen in speed, he can't quite match the overall potency of that Red Bull. And finally for Red Bull, it was a bit of a mixed day, as Verstappen started the day very unhappy with the car, and in FP2, whilst yes it was better, he still did not look like the dominant Max that we have seen so far this year. Due to the Monaco circuit only having one DRS zone, and because the cars don't even reach 300 km per hour at times, we never actually get to see the DRS benefit, meaning that this weekend the Red Bull's biggest weapon has been nerfed, which is why we are seeing an increased competition to them from their rivals, 
but in the end, it doesn't really matter as long as one of them still wins the race, and that is all that matters to them. And Max still has that one-tenth in his pocket that he needs to be on top. So, what have we learned from today? Williams is really struggling, and this could be Alfa Romeo's best performance this year. The new Mercedes is potentially an improvement over the curbs and an overall improvement of a car. Ferrari is also showing improved performance, and Red Bull has been slightly nerfed this weekend. But the question is, what will be the top 5 in qualifying? Well, this is my prediction, and don't be too offended by any of my choices. In P5, it will be Carlos Sainz, P4 will be Sergio Perez, P3 will be Charles Leclerc, P2 will be Max Verstappen, and I am still sticking with my bold prediction of Fernando Alonso on pole position. But the question is though, what do you guys think? Who do you think will be on pole position? Let me know in the comments, and as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.